Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to this segment of Living by Design. We are still making that journey from identifying our seeds, our gifts, and by that our purpose, trying to become more conscious of it, and wanting to design our lives around our purpose. We've talked about the seeds that are planted within us, we've talked about the human purpose, we've talked about the context wherein we find ourselves, and how all of these work together towards fulfilling the human purpose. Let's now look at the question of if you identify your seed, you are aware of it, you are conscious of it, so what? What if you, I, you know what your seed is, but you also realize that it's not as if I really know how to do this very well, but I'm drawn towards it. People have said I know how to do it well. What then? So we have two questions to answer. What then and so what? Let's take the first question. So what? You know your seed, so what? Your seed by itself has no value until you apply it to help somebody else. I will repeat that. Your seed by itself has no value. Your experiences in your context have no value until you apply that seed, the experiences from that context, to help somebody else, to care for yourself, for others, for the earth. It's not enough to say, I'm really great at understanding people. I know what motivates them. I know what moves them. I can get them to feel something. I can inspire them. If all of that is used to manipulate people for selfish ends or to cause more mischief and havoc. So when you know what your gifts are, you start asking, how do I make this gift beneficial for others? The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was reported to have said, the best among you are those who are beneficial to humankind, humanity. Therefore, the thought, how do you apply your gift to be beneficial to someone else? You have to take that thing you feel, straight, you feel strongly drawn to and then apply it to fulfill, to fulfill somebody's needs, to solve somebody's problem. This brings us to the point where we have to then ask, what problem do you want to solve in this life, in your community? What gaps do you see exist? Have you ever wondered to yourself sometimes, why doesn't somebody do such and such a thing? Or if only that person would, if only they would. When you start asking questions like that, you are actually looking at problems. You are seeing gaps. And I'm saying right now that Bringing your seed to life, making your seed valuable, is taking your seed and going to that gap you're seeing. And instead of saying, why don't they? What if somebody, if only so and so person would? And you start doing what you can using your seed. Of course, this requires skill. That's the what next. This requires you to fine tune that seed you have, to nurture it, to care for it, to improve upon it. It requires you to look at what other skills do you need in addition to this seed to really help it survive or thrive. It requires you to also say, who else is interested in this problem just as I am? But maybe their combination of seeds are different from mine. Can we collaborate? Can we work together? Or maybe they have seeds just like mine. Can we work together? Collaboration. So let me go over what I've just said in a nutshell. Your seed has no value if it's not solving a problem, meeting a need, filling a gap. So you take that seed and you take that problem you can see, that gap you can see because you're asking, why don't they? What if they? If only so and so would. You apply yourself to that problem using your seed. You work on yourself, improve your skills, improve your competences as you're doing that. You look for people to collaborate with as you're doing that. So there's collaboration, there's skill, there's application. All of your seed and all helping you design a life path, a life pattern around your purpose. 
many other things will then fall in place around that. I'll give a practical example. Like I said, growing up, growing older, if someone had said, what's your passion? What's your seed? I would have said reading books, writing stories, reading stories, reading about people's lives, teaching. But I have distilled it down to making meaning, drawing meaning forth from experiences, from things that I read, I, I encounter, and sharing that meaning, and joining others to help them make meaning for themselves as well. There was a time when I started feeling slightly frustrated with the educational training of staff, teachers. And I would say, if only somebody would, if only the government would, if only the ministry would work harder on training teachers. I would say, if I had a say, these are some of the things I think teachers should know how to do. A little bit of psychology, a little bit of cognitive psychology, a little bit of logical thinking, critical thinking, in addition to whatever course subjects they are learning. A little bit of, of social psychology, emotional intelligence, how to manage groups, group management. One day when I was busy thinking, if only the government would, if I had a say, I asked myself, so who says you don't have a say? Why are you waiting? So I actually cast my mind around. Do I have some of the skills for something like that? To expose others to that kind of training or to train them myself or have others train them? My answer was yes, because on the job, I do that where I work. I organize training sessions for teachers and staff. Do I know of other people who might be interested in something like this? They are similar to me in some ways and different from me in some ways. So that when we come together, we actually have this salad of styles, personality, skills, but we are all focusing on the same core thing. Yes. So I collaborated with them. I thought about the skills I had, looked for ways to sharpen them, took some more courses, short courses online, applied it to the problem, and for some months ran a tra training program for teachers. The program, inshallah, has not stopped. It will continue. But it's a short example of how you look at what you have, what your context has provided you with, what seeds lie within you. For me, my context was the fact that I work in a secondary school, I work to train staff and teachers, I've worked with students for many years, I've worked with staff for many years, these are part of the things my context has given me. And there are skills I have acquired along the way. I've had to work on my people's skills because I'm a result-oriented kind of person, so I've had to try and find a more centered approach to acquiring results, where I care about the results, the process, I also care about the people involved in the process. And I have collaborated. One thing you have to start asking is beyond the skills that I have, beyond I can do A or B, beyond this is my seed, beyond this is my context, maybe your family setting has exposed you to certain ideas, certain businesses, certain funds. Beyond all of that, is there a problem where I can apply this? Is there someone's needs I can meet? When discussing this sometimes with young people, they say, look, I know what my seed is. I know what I'm passionate about. I know what problem I want to solve. But I'm not yet working. I don't have a job. Where do I get the money? And a good number of the young people I work with come from comfortable homes. So I say, yes, but do your parents have the money? Do you have an aunt or an uncle that if you were trying to raise 50,000 Naira, from family members alone. You could do that quite easily within a few days. And then sometimes I see the lights go on in their heads like, yeah, I could. Some of them actually have pocket money accounts. And in their accounts, sometimes they have up to 30,000 Naira. And what they need money for would really, they really need money that's just what, 10,000 Naira? So I say, but do you have a pocket money account? Yes. Do you have enough money in your pocket money account to pull off this thing you have in mind? Yes. That's context providing the tool. Some people say, I, I really am passionate about empowering women 
but I'm a girl. And how do I do this? A young girl wanting to empower women. Certain questions that she would have to pose and then answer have to do with what I've just talked about. One of those questions would be, what is your context? Who do you know? What connections do you have? Who is it in your circle of people you know? Whether it's teachers at school, colleagues in school, your aunt, family members, even your father. Who do you know that would support this? Who do you know that has spoken of empowering women and seems deeply interested in it? Now, such a person may not even be close to you, but they are in your context if you know about them. You could send an email to such a person. You could start asking the question, who knows how I can get in touch with so-and-so? Once you meet such a person, you could draw from their knowledge. They could become your mentors, your inspiration. Or you could find that there's something they're already doing that aligns with what you would love to do. And you jump right in and you say, can I help you? Can I join you? I would love to contribute to this. That's how you make your context work for you. Sometimes it's a family member who simply wants what you want, ready to support you with advice, with connections, talking to people, helping you to print stuff, to write stuff. That is still tapping into your context. So you, you take whatever skill you have, maybe it's your writing skill, maybe it's your ability to write poems or to recite poetry beautifully. And so you write poems about women, the need to respect them, and you have somebody else who helps you with this exhibition, poetry exhibition, where you talk about it, or you simply go online, you put it on an Instagram page, and you connect with someone who's great at graphic design, and they design what goes up on your page. That's about collaboration. You take your skill, you collaborate. You take your skill, you connect with people within your context. When it comes to applying your skill to a problem or a need, again, you look at your context. For within your context, where Allah has placed you right now, there are enough problems that need to be solved. There are enough needs to be met. There are more than enough gaps to be filled. Because that is life. Life is never perfect. So when you sit down and you say, I don't know where to apply my seed to, I don't know what to apply it to, I don't know what problem, I say to you, you've not started looking yet. Once you start looking for a problem, you will find it. Now that we have explored this aspect, it's important to then sit down and start saying, all right, so where do I start? I say start now, start with what you have, start where you are, do what you can. It's about you owning your place in life. It's about you owning the fact that I am human and there is a purpose for all human beings and acknowledging that I have the seeds within me to apply myself to my context. I have tools within my context that I can use to make my life purposeful. I will do a quick recap of what we've covered so far. It's about knowing that you have a seed. So what? applies to a problem, that's the so what. You know you have a seed. What then? Acquire the skills that hone and strengthen and nourish that seed. And step forward from there. Collaborate with people. Consult people. Look within your context and start working. Start now. There are a few more con concepts we'll look at, so make sure you join us for the next episode of Living by Design. I'm Salatu Sule. Thank you so much for listening.